Hi guys and welcome to Motor Beam. Did you know that 34% of the Indian car buyers are driven by the fact the way a car looks instead of the price, features, performance, warranty, service, etc. And Hyundai has taken that number to the heart and re-entered the compact sedan segment with its brand new offering, the Hyundai Aura. Even though it's a brand new product, a lot of its elements scream blast from the past. Or simply put, a lot of its elements are taken from the recently launched Hyundai Neos. For example, the cascading grille and the boomerang LED DRLs. The difference is the Neos gets one on each side, whereas the Aura gets two. The air dam is bigger and honeycombed in shape, whereas the fog lamps are similarly placed. Even as we move to the side, this compact sedan has an uncanny resemblance to the hatchback up until the B-pillar. From there, it gets a sloping roofline. However, making it different are its uniquely styled 15-inch alloy wheels, which have spokes which are not actually going anywhere. But it also gets chrome door handles, body-colored outside rear view mirrors, and a very strong body line. However, if you thought the front and side of this car is funky, wait till you see the rear of this car. I might be going on a limb here, but the rear in my opinion looks a little bit overdone and busy. But since beauty lies in the eye of the beholder, it is for you to decide. Click on the pop-up banner on the right corner and cast your vote on the looks of this car. Coming back to what it offers, it gets Z-shaped LED tail lights which are connected by a chrome strip in the middle. It also gets a lot of cuts and creases on the bumper and the loading lip is a little bit high, putting in luggage a little difficult. The tailgate opens nice and wide and reveals the boot space which holds at 402 litres. What is interesting here is the wheelbase of the Neos and the Aura are similar, that is 2450 millimeters, but the Aura offers a bigger boot as the Neos just get 260 liters of storage capacity. The Hyundai Aura is offered in two interior colors, a dual tone dark grey and an all black with red stitching limited to the turbo variant. The other difference lies in the colour of the crash pad. In the turbo variant, it is dark grey, whereas in the other variant, it is satin copper coloured. Now since we are in the turbo variant, it gets red accents around the AC vents and the music system as well. Other common features in the higher variants include a multifunctional 3-spoke wheel, 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system which is the largest in its segment. It also gets Apple CarPlay, Android connectivity and a host of other features. However, it does not get Hyundai's Blue Link connected tech. Other features include a cool glove box, a wireless charging system and a lot of charging options for the front passengers. The front seats are quite comfortable but the lumbar support could have been a little bit better. It is a bummer that the front seats don't get an adjustable headrest but having said that, the under thigh support is quite adequate. There are a lot of storage spaces for the front passengers like twin cup holders, a cavity to keep the key fob bottle holders at the door and a little pace to keep your phone as well. Even though the fit and finish of the interior is quite premium, you cannot ignore the abundant hard plastics in the cabin. The Hyundai Aura gets standard dual airbags with ABS. It also gets rear parking sensors and a rear view camera. On top of that, it also gets a driver rear view monitor which allows you to look at the traffic behind you while you're driving. Apart from that, it also gets seat belt reminder, seat belt monitor, impact sensing door lock, impact sensing door unlock, etc. The rear seats are comfortable and reclining for a comfortable position for the rear passengers. Despite the sloping roof line, the headroom is quite abundant. The knee room could have been better, but the under thigh support is adequate. In terms of features, the rear passengers get a rear charging socket, rear AC vents, a magazine holder and a center armrest with two cup holders. Seating three full-grown adults at the back is going to be a tight fix as the shoulder room is not that great. Even though it gets three seat belts, it only gets two adjustable headrests. 
Apart from that, it gets a bottle holder on each door and ISOFIX child mounts. However, having said that, the transmission tunnel at the back is not that protruding but not that flat either. The Hyundai Aura is offered in 6 powertrain options out of which 4 are old, that is the 1.2 litre petrol and the 1.2 litre diesel engine. Both are offered with a 5-speed manual and a 5-speed AMT. Both engines are tried and tested in the NEOS and they work pretty fine. What is different now is that both of them are BSX compliant and much refined than before. The other thing which is new is the 1-litre turbo petrol engine which is lifted from the Hyundai Venue. Now even though it's lifted from the Venue, it gets much less power, 20 horsepower to be exact. The 1 litre turbo petrol is not offered with a 5 speed automatic and it only gets a 5 speed manual transmission. Coming to the power figures, the 1.2 litre petrol offers 83 PS of power and 113 Nm of torque. The biofuel offers 69 PS of power and 95 Nm of torque. The 1.2 litre diesel offers 75 PS of power, whereas the turbo that we are driving today offers 100 PS of power and 171 Nm of torque. For the older engines, the fuel efficiency figures are the same, but for the turbo, Hyundai claims that it returns 20.3 km per litre. However, the real time average is going to be somewhere around 12 to 14 km per litre. Even though it does not get a sixth gear, the gears are so tall that the first gear will take you up to 60 km per hour, the second will cross 100 in no time, and the third will go even forward. The 20 horsepower less that it gets from the venue is not actually felt that much in the aura because this is much lighter in weight. The steering feels nice and light but it offers absolutely no feel or feedback. It weighs up pretty well up on the highways but in the city it will leave you striving for more. The tyres offer decent grip but hard cornering is still not made for this car. The clutch is light which is adequate for city traffic drivability. Since the engine is BS6 compliant, the cabin feels quiet at times. Once you rev hard, the tyre screeching noise does get in. But having said that, the NVH levels are controlled pretty well. Despite being a turbo engine, it does not have a very enthusiastic low end. It actually kicks in after 1500 rpm and goes up till 6000. Despite the tall gears and turbo in its name, it does not actually kick in the pants. The mid-range is where the engine really shines and the top end is also agile. However, it has a linear power delivery. Talking about the ride quality, the suspension is neither on the stiffer side or on the softer side. It's somewhere in the middle and it's adequate. Due to the light weight, there is a little bit of body roll but it's well contained. Going over potholes or speed breakers at a high speed is going to jiggle you up very bad. The brakes work pretty fine and will bring you to a halt whenever required. But having said that, all plus and minus is in point. There is no doubt that the turbo petrol is a very fun to drive variant. When the accent was taken off the shelves, it left a gaping hole for Hyundai to fill in. Now with the Aura, the car maker aims to reclaim that position and challenge its rivals even better. Now since looks are subjective to buyers, keeping it aside, it will be a crime to not applaud Hyundai for offering the first turbo petrol of this segment, a BS6 compliant diesel engine with an automatic transmission and the best in class warranty of 5 years. Also, at a price of Rs 5.79 lakhs, the petrol variant undercuts all its rivals. Well, Hyundai has laid all its cards on the table and in my opinion, it ticks all the right boxes. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, hit the like button, comment down what you think about the Aura in terms of the looks and do subscribe to the Motorbeam channel.